This week I'm chatting with the brilliant Trad Moore as we talk through his work in this beautiful double page spread from Ghost Rider issue 1 in which Trad did a backup story with colours by Val Staples and written by Felipe Smith. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass with guest Tradmore, and we're going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. Well, one of the reasons why I wanted to pick this, it was a really good example of highlighting a couple of things that I, I see in your work that you kind of tend to do quite a lot, which is you have a lot of these, uh, you know, in the middle panel running across the page, you've got that, that movement, and also you've got, for what is a, a really dynamic page, but a lot of the angles you choose tend to be quite straightforward in terms of kind of yeah. being quite head on. Mm -hmm. Is that like something you developed or is that just something that's just kind of, you just do it and you like the way it looks? A little bit of both. You start doing a thing based on, you know, just your natural inclination. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes you learn why you like things afterwards. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. I, I, you know, I, I do profile shots a lot during action sequences because to me there's a, a clarity to it. And I just really like being able to see like the character's movement through a space mm -hmm. in the same way as you know martial arts movies you know jackie chan's one of my favorite guys ever mm -hmm. and and the reason his action scenes are so great is because he's doing these things you know what i mean it's not reliant on fast cuts or camera tricks you don't need clever shot placement because you're watching people who are the best in the world at what they're doing. So yeah, that's what I try to do. And it goes right into why I often do multiple shots of one character. Sometimes I just feel like it's not enough just to see one panel of them doing something or one shot. Like I want to see the entire movement of their of their body. You know what I mean? I want to see yeah. the wind up and the pitch, you know? <laughs> so so yeah, that's, that's something that... Uh, that I toy around with a lot. Because it's something that you see in like old Spider-Man comics as well quite a lot. Right, yeah, to show them like flipping around and yeah. uh, they do that Daredevil comics too. It would bug me that a lot of times uh, they would they would have the main Spider-Man, you know, like landing yep. and all of the ones of him flipping, they would color hold and he'd be, you know, blue or whatever to yeah, show yeah, like, yeah. He's not, there's not actually 10 Spider-Mans, you know, <laughs> he, just one. And then that's his like, basically like ghost image mm -hmm. that's doing the flipping, which is, which is fine and cool. But I remember always looking at that and being like, I don't think it was necessary to, <laughs> to knock all of that back. I don't know. It's kind of being able to control the time yourself. You know what I mean? It's like if you're watching a YouTube video and you can go forward and backwards and, and watch, you know, for example, watching skateboarding tricks in slow motion, you know, you can watch it forward and then go back a little bit. And then, you know, so that way you can catch every every part of the action, all the detail and stuff. And that's something that I've always really loved doing. When you're talking about like the, the color holes and stuff on the on like the old Spider-Man stuff, because how, how dare you put more than one, one image of the, yeah. <laughs> of the same character in the, in the same panel unless people get confused. But, you know, because yeah. you, you have characters that break out of panels as there is, you know, in, in this page, you've got on the, mm -hmm. the, the top two, they kind of, kind of exist outside of the time, which is nice. And that's what kind of developed when you stop putting stuff in frames, is that there's, there's this idea that all of this is existing at the same time, or rather it's so quick that it's unfolding very, very quickly in the time that I'm kind of watching it happen. Yeah, no, I, I think that, uh, I mean, that's that's when, you know, when you successfully break a panel border and do that type of stuff, I do that to lead the viewer's eye and to make it seem like this is all happening very quickly. You know, you had the first panel of Ghost Rider, who he's, his fire is coming from off of the page, you know, leading you into the first panel, mm -hmm. which then Piston's Uzi breaks into that panel, which leads you up her arm and to the, this big, cool shot of her, you know, and then you have her Uzi again, breaking the panel border, leading you to the next panel, you know, and that panel break, uh, you know, her Uzi breaking the border is also going with the speed lines right across the page and then her blue lightning almost points like a finger right down to the bottom left panel of her aiming her Uzis at, at Ghost Rider, you know, and, and so on. Breaking the panel borders and that kind of stuff, like it can be done in a clever way and it can be done in a very pointless way. And <laughs> I mean, sometimes, and sometimes uh, if the only point is to look cool and it doesn't disrupt anything, then I have no problem with that. You know, I, it's superhero comic, you know what I mean? This, <laughs> Like these, this is larger than life. It's. It, I feel like if you're not going a little crazy and aiming for the ridiculous side of things, I feel like you're missing out on uh, the strength of, of the medium. Uh, not saying that you have to break panel borders to tap into in some sort of visual bombast or power, but you know, basically, if you can use something like that to really make something exciting, then you know, I say use it because I think it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
in one of the earlier like creators edition ones with um with Declan Shalvey said a similar thing about like every now and then he just wants to give a panel to make a character look cool. Right, for, you know, you know yeah. for no other reason apart from just it just be a nice moment to kind of go like yep. look how cool this person is in this moment. Yep. Well, and that's the thing too. I mean, there's I I feel like sometimes people forget maybe what attracted them to comics in the first place mm-hmm. or what people like about comics and you know at the end of the day you know something that i just always loved about comics and will always love is just uh cool character designs <laughs> I, I think that a lot of a lot of exciting design work and a lot of stuff that really you know has been definitive to modern culture uh you know as to what heroes look like what villains look like has started in comics you know what i mean like you follow dr doom to darth vader you know down the line you know what i mean it's it's you can kind of follow these paths you know if you design this great character if you have this super cool thing like why would you not want to show it off you know what i mean (laughs) yeah uh and i know as a kid you know if i flipped through a comic and it didn't have at least one just cool shot of the character i'd i'd be think that uh, I had wasted my money <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> like I like why did I why, why did I get this if there's not even a single cool shot of, uh, of yeah, this yeah. character and, and I work differently depending on the type of book that I'm working on and obviously for a lot of the stuff that we're talking about right now I'm talking pretty specifically about superhero books you know what I mean because yeah. uh, I think that people obviously read Ghost Rider or Daredevil for a lot different reasons than they're going to be reading Mouse uh, and yeah, so, yeah, you don't yeah. need a badass shot of, you know, mouse walking out <laughs> at the door. You know, that's irrelevant. To I think the... there's still room for him there. I think that you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would draw it cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that would be pretty amazing. That would be, be a cool commission for you to get, I think. Yeah, yeah. If after this, uh, someone's like, I need to have both to draw a mouse. I'm, I'm pretty sure that after, yeah, if someone hears this, they might, they might put me up to it. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, this is a, this is a, the kind of a crazy page, and you also said on Twitter that this was Marvel method, right? Right. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, this was something that I had to hit on a pretty tight deadline too, specifically for you know at the rate that I work. But yeah, like Felipe Smith, the writer, you know, he knew that he just wanted to let me do my thing with the artwork. He knows that sometimes you don't need someone telling you every which way to go and that we'll actually get a better product and we'll get the most out of both of our time. So yeah, I just laid this one out and tried to make it as exciting and and fun as possible. You know, I wanted cool, big, exciting shots of of the of the main characters, you know what I mean? And you have this this page split pretty much in half, you know, between Ghost Rider on the left and uh, Piston on the right, you know what I mean? So it's got this kind of video game dynamic of like a fighting game. I basically designed this page with the idea of like I I wanted a big, cool profile shot, middle panel, and I and I wanted a big, exciting shot of Piston Nitro. So I, I kind of designed the page around that. Had to look up a bunch of slow-mo skateboarding videos. <laughs> So the other thing that pops out of this page, I think, is colour. And you alluded to it earlier when you talked about that kind of left and right divide, because you can see it uh, with the orange on one side and the the blue on the other. So how aware are you of what a colourist is going to have to do to your work? And is there anything that you do to kind of work with that or towards that? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, in the same way that I was saying, it is wise of anyone in this industry to know the work of who you're working with. Mm because it is a waste of everyone's time to to not use the strengths of the people that you're working with. You know, it's something that I do a lot of research into a person's work and capabilities and strength, and I will definitely draw things differently and lay things out differently and choose whether I want to spot black certain things or not, yeah. or whether I want to render certain things based on the colorist that I'm working with. For example, someone like Val Staples, this is a great page to show it out. He's, he's really good with effects work, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's great at making stuff look like it's, you know, glowing. You know, that fire looks like it's shining at you. The the lightning looks like it's really glowing. Mm -hmm. So that's something with Ghost Rider that I take full advantage of. And I just go crazy with the special effect (laughs) stuff, you know, and make fire shooting everywhere and lightning shooting all over the place. And I know also with him that I can leave backgrounds, you know, as long as I've, as long as I've established where these characters are. Mm -hmm. On a page like this, there is literally not a single background. (laughs) Um, 
Yeah. But it, and it's something that maybe with a different person I wouldn't be able to do. But I knew that it would actually work to the benefit of this page to let the color, you know, do the talking. One of the whole concepts behind this backup and creating this this villain was we wanted to have a cool visual dynamic. You know, whether it was fire versus ice or fire versus lightning or whatever you know we were throwing ideas around and we just you know we wanted something that would really stand out and jump off the page and Val was very aware of this and I really love how he does effect work so I just threw effects all over the page and was like have fun <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's again but it's like everything works together which is the you know that's the fun thing about comic you can't say who necessarily did what on kind of any particular level, if that makes sense. Right, exactly. And that's, uh, you know, with Felipe as well, he's got such a strong personality mm -hmm. and voice that it I, I draw differently when I'm working with Felipe than I do with other people, just based on the, you know, the, the worlds that he creates. You know what I mean? I draw a certain way. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely, even if he just gives me a sentence, I know that it's Felipe giving me this sentence and I <laughs> and I know what kind of stuff he likes but you know I think that when you have a good comic yeah. uh, or a good movie or a good whatever mm -hmm. the idea is that like you just like you said before that you you can't separate why you liked a scene you know you you just liked it because everything was firing on all cylinders mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's the goal is to have everyone able to completely voice their their style their aesthetic at once and uh, when it works out you get a you get a really cool page which nicely wraps up this page in ghost rider next week we'll be back with a regular episode but in two weeks time try this back again discussing another page of his work in which we'll be talking about the awesome luther strode in the meantime you can check out an earlier episode on strode if you haven't already seen it the link is below thanks for watching if you're a fan of Strip Panel Naked, we'd love for you to support us on Patreon, where you get access to tons of extras, including this long unedited chat with Trad Moore. For more comics talk and analysis, you can find me on Twitter at Hassanoui. And finally, hit subscribe to keep up to date with all the new episodes, and we'll see you next time.